He's none other than Jason Stark. How are you, Jason? Rich, I'm great. How are you, my friend? I'm doing fine. So is there going to be a special uh, Bryce Harper corner, or does everybody <laughs> just go from the winter meetings to his house? Uh, is there a shuttle? I mean, what, what what's the setup here in Vegas? Yeah, you, you might have heard the rumor that Bryce lives in Vegas where the winter meetings are in his town in the year that he's a free agent. You just can't make this stuff up. Uh, I, I, I would say it's safe to assume that Scott Boris has been collecting every bell and every whistle that could be collected. And the, the Bryce Harper storylines will be swirling. Whether he signs at the winter meetings is a whole nother story, but we'll be talking about him nonstop. Well, I had him on the show a couple of weeks ago, Scott Boris, and I asked him if he's going to wait for Machado to go first. He says those are two totally unrelated issues. Do you believe that? <laughs> Uh, no, they're not. Um, one is going to set the market for the other. Um, you know, Scott has this ability to create a bidding war in which the war is not necessarily team versus team, but teams bidding against this mythical record that he believes Bryce needs to set. Bryce n- needs to be the highest paid player in the game, either measured against the highest dollars per year or the biggest total contract, the Giancarlo Stanton deal, or ideally in Scott's world, both. And even if there's only one team in the bidding, I'm convinced that Scott will find a way to have that team bid against that dynamic. But the other side of the coin is Dan Lozano thinks the same stuff about Manny. And so, of course, they're linked. But, I mean, so what What do you think the market is for both? Let's start with, with Bryce Harper, because we're hearing that Magic Johnson's flying out with the Dodgers contingent to go hang out in Vegas. Uh, and, yeah, well, and, that, that and, was the, the Yahoo Sports report the other day that the, the Dodgers shot down, that Magic even personally shot down. And I, I would not count out the Dodgers. You, I mean, you can't, right? But... You know, I've also had people inside the Dodgers tell me in within the last calendar year or so, we are out of the 10-year, nine-figure contract business. Well, they're not going to get Bryce Harper without signing him for at least 10 years and at least nine figures. That's safe to say, right? So we will, we'll, we'll see about that part of it. Um, the Dodgers have played it very coyly, but it's such a perfect fit. It's certainly something to watch. Okay, so how many teams do you think are in on on Bryce Harper right well, now? Well, I, I mean, again, that Yahoo Sports report by Jeff Passan and Tim Brown said upward of a dozen teams. Uh, as you know, as I've called around, asked about that since I, I would take the under on that. I think it's really a much tighter circle. Uh, I think the Phillies are clearly in it. The White Sox are clearly in it. The Nationals are lurking, but it's more challenging for them now after the Patrick Corbin deal. And then the I mean the Yankees are clearly monitoring this. I don't think they're bidding, but they're They don't need I, I, him. They don't need him, Jason. They I, I don't they they don't need him. I mean, you've got you've got in your outfield, obviously you've already got that three hundred million dollar player right. or whatever else is left on, on Stanton's contract. Judge is a generational talent that the whole fan base is head over heels in love with. You're not putting him in center field. I mean, they. It's so wow. And 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 uh, on that front too, I don't think they need Machado either. I don't. I don't care that Didi Gregorius might not play next year. I mean, how many people come back from Tommy John surgery and throw 100 miles an hour? I mean, just. <laughs> get, I'm serious. Get through the season. Yeah. You don't need to commit 300 million dollars to to Manny Machado if you're the Yankees, but I guess they will, maybe. Two of them, I'm with you. I think Manny is actually the better fit. Um, You know, there are a lot of parallels here to Aaron Boone gets hurt playing basketball, and next thing you know, Alex Rodriguez is a Yankee. Uh, You you know, you could concoct that storyline, and Manny has communicated to the Yankees, from what I've heard, that he would like to be a Yankee. And, again, they're clearly (laughs) monitoring this. Are they... Are they going to pay him $300 million? I don't see that. It depends, I think, how badly he wants to be a Yankee. But the fact that he could start out playing short and when Didi comes back could slide over to third makes him really an ideal fit for them in terms of just the baseball part of it. 
The rest of it is a whole other story. So what, what do you think happens with these two guys when it's all said and done, if you read a crystal ball, Jason, right now? Uh, we're all just guessing. This, sure. this market is really just getting going for both of them. If I were going to guess, I'd predict Harper to the Phillies, Machado to the Yankees. But I'm, first off, I'm never right. <laughs> nice. Second, anything is possible. This really, it, we're just in the early stages of this, believe it or not, five weeks in the free agency. Jason Stark, MLB Network's coverage again from Las Vegas beginning this Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and also covering the winter meetings for the athletic. Who, who's on the other tier? Who are we not paying attention to that's out there that uh, has a ton of people chasing after and can actually be a difference maker, do you think, yeah, Jason? Well, I mean, n- now that Patrick Corbin has signed uh, and you know, once Machado and Harper signed, I think we're definitely then ne- into the next tier. But Michael Brantley uh, is, a, is a really intriguing player. Um, Jay, you know, the starting pitching market starting to move. I think Jay Happ will sign pretty quickly. He's probably the next domino to fall there. Uh, and then, you know, you got all the Boris clients who will just hang around hmm. because that's what Scott does. Um, and then the other guy to watch, Craig Kimbrell. Uh, Craig Kimbrell is one of the greatest closers who ever lived, not coming off a great October, looking for six years and, and probably historic money. I don't know if he gets that. But, I mean, that's a difference-making player. What are the Diamondbacks doing, Jason, here? I mean, Corbin winds up uh, going to the Nationals, and Goldschmidt gets traded to the Cardinals. What's going on with Arizona here? Well, uh, I mean, I'm I'm sure this is discouraging for anyone who cares about that team. But I I also think it's safe to say that had they not won as many games as they won in 2017 and – you know, and made it to the postseason. Then they would have done this a year ago, but didn't feel like they could do it then. But th- this has been this has been in the wind, hovering over this entire season. Uh, we knew they weren't going to be able to re-sign Patrick Corbin, and it was clear that if they got a deal they liked, they would trade Paul Goldschmidt. Um, they might not be done, right? There's there, there's certainly other pieces there. They'd love to move Grinky. I think they would move Robbie Ray. Um, I mean, for a team that was in first place for five months, this is discouraging for people in Arizona and for the industry as a whole, but it's where we are. Um, so what's going on with the shift, Jason? I read that in The Athletic, uh, on your, <laughs> in, your, in your column in The Athletic, and I, I, as you know, I despise it. Uh, I think it is absolutely the root cause as to why an at-bat results either in a strikeout walk or a home run these days. Uh, Every manager that I've had on uh, this show, Cora and Roberts and Hinch, just to name three that I've asked about it, Melvin, none of them say that they'd be up for having it legislated out. And yet, according to you, it looks like that the commissioner is going to try and get a rule pass to get the shift out of the game here, correct? Well, I mean, I... You know, I wrote this piece the other day in The Athletic, and it, it really did blow up. Uh, the response has been incredible. And it was generated by the fact that during the owners' meeting, I think it was, it was three weeks ago, the competition committee met, and there was an, a really surprisingly strong amount of support shown within that committee for doing something to limit shifts. Um, you know, there are not a lot of front office people on that committee. Uh, there, you know, so you have to keep that in mind. There's been an incredible amount of front office pushback that I've heard since I wrote this piece, but there's definite interest in it. Um, and then, so the question is, would the players agree to it? I think they would. We know that, you know, look, half the players are hitters. They would all agree to it. Joey Gallo tweeted after I wrote that story, this is all I want for Christmas. And a lot of pitchers don't like it, even though you know, the data would show it helps them. So the, I think this is something you could get the players to approve. And then the other question is, how much would it help? They're, you know, What they're looking for is more action, more guys running around the bases. Uh, I had Sports Info, Info Solutions crunch these numbers. Yeah. There's no doubt that the batting average on ground balls, short line drives that are now going into the shift and are outs would go up 50 points. You definitely have 
more base runners, and more action. And so it's going to be a fascinating conversation. Yeah, I, I read some of the, the numbers earlier in the show, Jason, and it's just it, it's not as if the shift has obviously the shift's been around for a long time. I mean, you, you could you could you could put the word baseball shift and Ted Williams in there, and you could see right. a you know like what looks to me like a newspaper. Uh, graphic, if you will, from back in the '50s and the '40s of of a shift against Ted Williams, and and yep. and so it's been around forever, but it has exploded. I mean, it's absurd. Scott Boris again was on a couple weeks ago. He said it's biased against lefties, and his point is absolutely well taken. And the point that you cannot have four guys on the right side, on the left side of second, just for the mere fact nobody's covering first, in the same way that you could do it. Uh, against a lefty, having four guys on the right side of second, it's it, it, so. What do you think the your best guess would be? Uh, the language, it's it, yeah, yeah. That that's a hard one. Uh, you know, I asked a lot of questions about this, and I I would say all that they have committed to so far is two infielders on the left side of second base and two infielders on the right side of second base. But would would you be allowed to put infielders in the outfield? They haven't gotten that far yet. Would you be? Would you see a, a, the shortstop or second baseman three inches from second base and then charging over to the other side of the bag as the pitch is thrown? Uh, it depends how the rule is written. There are a lot of ways you can go. I had uh, people from from teams ask me, "How are we defining an infielder?" Um, you know, suppose I decide to make my shortstop an outfielder and then I play him in the short right field. Um, th- th- this would be very hard to word and very hard to enforce. I don't think anybody disputes that part. But here's my thing, Rich. I, I love baseball. I'm for anything that makes the game better, more entertaining, something that more people love and talk about. And all of this should be part of the conversation. That's really why I wrote the piece. Let's start the conversation. All right. And is Pete Rose going to be signing autographs in Vegas? I mean, this, 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 this. Is he, <laughs> we're going to see him at the Bellagio, you know, in that uh, in that yeah, mall area. To do that. I mean, he's always been. De- I mean, I'm I'm kind of being serious. I, what do you think? I, ha- I have not checked the schedule, but <laughs> he signs autographs during Hall of Fame induction week. So I would winter meetings week be any different? Winter meetings in Vegas. That's an interesting choice. It really, really is, man, for baseball. Jason, thanks for the time, brother. Yeah, it's in, happened before, Rich. Enjoy. I think, okay, has it really? It's interesting. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, it's the second time. Ten second years ago. time. Ten years ago. Well, it's changed a little bit. The Blue Man Group, I think, still there, though, uh, Jason. <laughs> I think they're still there. Yeah, certainly right. the way will probably sign a, a nine-year, $220 million contract. The, yeah, I'm Scott sure. Boris, uh, Cirque du Soleil. Is, uh, there's two shows every single night. <laughs> Good to chat with you, Jason. Always a pleasure, Rich. You Take care, man. At, Happy holidays. You bet. Same to you. That's Jason Stark at Jason ST. I follow him on Twitter. You should, too. It's great stuff. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.